Okay, my name is Susan Engevin. I work with Civi Desk. We're actually a provider. We're here in Denver, and I do all of the training for Civi Desk, and I do customer support as well for our clients, but I teach a class pretty much every week. I teach an online class that's open to the general public. So I just wanted to tell you that if you're you know, looking for resources for training for your staff or yourself or whomever, or if you know people, it's an online class, it's two hours, you just sign up, you know, it, it's, you have to pay, it's pretty reasonably priced. And then I do different, they're kind of more beginner level, um, but like I do one on contacts, membership events, contributions, and I'm looking to add some new curriculum. So um, just so you know about that resource, because I know that it can be difficult for people, a lot of times, you know, there aren't classes available, you're not in that city, you know, so this is a good online resource. So what we're going to talk about today, I thought it might be interesting to look, um, instead of going really in depth kind of on one module like I do in my classes, we're going to look more horizontally. And we're going to look at a membership renewal campaign as an example. But if you would go to the next slide, Virginie, the idea here is we're going to be using a lot of different modules to, do, to perform this, uh, this campaign, this membership renewal campaign. So, of course, you're always using contacts, right? I mean, that's something you, you're always going to be using, the contact management piece. And that is important to know how to, to, to use that. And I'm just curious to know how many people here actually work for an organization and you have members that you're, okay, so most of you. And are you using Civi to do, like, are you using an online page um, on Civi for the membership, like to have people sign up? No, okay, yes and no. And have you done renewals? Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so good. I just wanted to get a feel for where people were with things. And um, so obviously Civi member is going to be a module you're gonna be using. And then we're gonna be looking at Civi campaign. Now, we're calling this a membership renewal campaign, but you could do a membership renewal. It doesn't have to be necessarily a campaign, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we're gonna also be looking at Civi contribute because that's where our membership, online membership page is really stored and created under the, you know, Civi Contribute. And then Civi Mail, we might be using that, obviously, to send out the mass emailing to everyone. And then finally, Civi Report. Because at the end, you're gonna want to kind of track what's going on, who has renewed, and you can go into reports and use the reports um, for membership to do that. You know, I haven't been using Civi for that long and I remember kind of wondering, well, what is this all about? And, but you can, you'll see it, you know, when you go through different screens and all the different modules, you see that you can have a drop down menu to choose the campaign and usually I'm just glossing right over that and not worrying about it. And the thing about today is that you can do this same thing that we're talking about, like membership renewal, you could do the same thing with like an event or you could apply it to different parts in Civi, okay? So today, when we talk about um, adding a campaign type, now, there are different campaign types, and if you go under Administer, um, and you go under Civi Campaign, you'll be able to add a campaign type, okay? And um, membership, we had to add that. I added that into my demo, so I could pull up. I'm gonna show you some screenshots. And then you're gonna name the campaign. So when you're naming the campaign, um, that's a little different. You're going to go under uh, campaigns and put in a new campaign. So if we could have that screenshot, could you go forward? Okay, this is adding the campaign type. Okay, so this is under the administer um, menu. Administer, Civi, campaign, and then campaign types. So I just put in that one membership, and I, you see it in the purple there. Okay, now that exists in there, and then we had a second step, which is the next slide is where we added a new campaign. And you can be, you should be kind of specific with the title, but it does automatically put in the date. Like when you put in membership renewal campaign and hit save, it, it's gonna put in the date that it was added. So you'll see that's 2015. So that helps you kind of be more specific, if you will, okay? Virginie, do you mind going back then to the, there you go. And then you can put in a begin and an end date if you want. Uh, you don't have to, but you know, if you think about a membership renewal campaign, you probably want to try to 
get a lot of the work done within a certain period of time, um, maybe a month or two, where you're really concentrating. Um, and, it, and this is going to depend a bit on how you do your membership. Now, if you have, um, there's two different period types, you know, fixed and rolling. Have you, do you guys know about that? Okay. So the fixed, everybody's joining at the same, on the same date, basically, or you're trying to get everybody to join on the same date. Rolling, somebody could join any time, yeah, through the year, and then it's good for, say, you have a year-long membership. It's good for one year out. So if somebody joins your organization today, then they're going to have that membership until April, what is our date today, 23rd. So they'll have it till the 22nd, actually. And so that's the rolling. And what I like about Civi, what's so great, is that it's really a lot easier to track, you know, the rolling memberships. Um, years ago, when we were uh, running the local Chamber of Commerce, um, we had, uh, we wanted to do rolling memberships, but you know, trying to track that stuff and keep up with the expiration dates and sending out the renewal and doing that on paper or in Excel, it can be very difficult. So Civi is going to help you do that a lot better. So if you don't, you know, if you want to switch from fixed to rolling and you're just starting with Civi, I'd say, hey, go for it. Good timing because it's going to help you. Um, but with the campaign itself, the begin and end date, you can put that in, you can put in a revenue goal. So maybe you do, you know, when you're doing membership renewal, you might be trying to get to a certain um, amount that you need to raise for your year, you know, and so you could put that in. You don't, you're not required. And then, of course, what you're want, going to want to do, and we're going to be looking at configuring the membership page here in just a moment, but you're going to want to make sure on that membership page that when you see that little field where it's campaign, you're going to choose your membership renewal campaign. And you're going to make basically a link, you know, in a sense. I mean, don't take that word literally, but you're just putting those two together so that that membership renewal page is part of, you know, it's part of that campaign. Okay, so we can probably go through these. So how do we go about doing that? Well, <laughs> updating contact data. That's probably the first thing that you need to be thinking about whenever you're going to do like a mass emailing or ma you know, contacting a whole bunch of, um, of your constituents all at the same time. And just so you guys know, please feel free to, if you want to interject with something or you have a question, just, you know, I want this to be kind of interactive. Um, so finding emerging duplicates. And I don't know how familiar you all are with that, but you know, under contacts, so under contact management, you can go to find emerged duplicates. You probably want to run some of those rules and maybe I would recommend um, you know maybe going in and seeing creating like a general rule that will help you um, find duplicates or even like with organizations I've noticed that a lot of times there'll be duplicate names um, but they're not exactly the same name it's the same organization but the name is slightly different because of some you know way somebody has inputted it into the database so it helps to do things where you don't search on the whole name, but you search on like maybe the first five or six um, letters, you know, so it kind of, and it'll pull up things that aren't duplicates too, but it'll help you find some of those, you know, duplicates, like if somebody puts in the LLC on one name and they don't on the other, or if they do kind of an abbreviation of an organization name. So you want to go through and you want to just do some cleanup. Then what you want to do is you want to check on your email addresses. Okay, because, you know, and I know not every organization, a lot of people don't have um, email addresses. And a lot of organizations tell me, well, you know, we have um, our constituents, our contacts are elderly, um, they don't have email. And that can still be the case, you know, in a lot of, um, for a lot of organizations. But we're kind of going on the premise here that most people have an email. So we're going to try to make sure that we have correct email addresses. Okay, and we can do a couple of different things. And you see, I put you can search for contacts without an email address, and you can do that in Search Builder. I don't know, do you use Search Builder very much? I see maybe no, that one kind of seems to intimidate people. And um, what you do in Search Builder is you're going to go in there and um, you can do a search, and you're going to go for contacts, email, and is empty. So you're saying that that email field is empty for a contact record, okay? 
So you'll choose contacts, uh, email, primary, and then I think it says equal, and then is empty. I'm trying to remember. And then do a little search, and you'll be surprised. You know, you might have a lot. I mean, it could be kind of overwhelming. But that will give you an idea. And then maybe you need to make some phone calls and try to get emails for those folks if they have an email address. So that's one thing you want to do. Then you can also search, search for bounced emails. So um, you can do that in advanced search, okay? And um, a bounced email is an activity. So you're going to go into advanced search, and you're going to go, you're going to click on activities, and then search for that activity type, of, and, and see, you know, who's, whose emails are bouncing, and then probably contact those folks. And then you can also go in and just maybe add new contacts and make sure that contact information is updated. So just to kind of get you in a good place, because you want to start out with a nice, um, you know, with a database that most of the stuff is accurate. I mean, you're never going to be 100%. But when you're beginning this membership renewal campaign, it's, you know, it's going to be a real drag if you send out these emails and you're like, oh my goodness, well, we had like, you know, 50 of them come back or all these weren't deliverable. And so try to get yourself into a good spot with your data. Okay. And then Let's talk a little bit about, um, and, and I don't know if this pertains to everyone, but about organization members. So you have, you know, a lot of organizations or nonprofits that I talk to, they have um, both individual memberships, and then they have memberships that are like corporate or small business. So this is where it gets a little bit, um, I don't want to say complicated because that's too strong of a word, but just maybe we need to take a little more time figuring this part out. Because when you have an organization that, like a small business, and they have several people that work there that are a member, you know, say you allow for like three employees to be members of the small business, typically you want to choose one person that's going to be your point person. Because when you send out, and maybe a better example would be a corporate level, you've got 10 people that you have listed you know, under the organization and relationships, those 10 employees, you don't want all 10 of them to get the renewal email. What a disaster that would be. So you need to select one person that has what's called the permissioned relationship. You know, you could have more than one. You can definitely select more than one, but I think typically people say, yeah, that's the person who's in charge. So what you're going to do um, is you're going to, you need to go through and make sure that this is taken care of so that one person will receive the renewal email. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. If you go to the next um, slide, if you would. There you go. OK, this is an example. I'll stand over here. This is a contact record for a company called Anderson. Just a made up one in my demo. And this, I've clicked on the Relationships tab, and I'm looking at all the current relationships. So those are all the employees okay, of Anderson. And you see the one in purple. He has a little red star, an asterisk. His name's Michael Johnson. So he has the permissioned relationship. So we know when we look at that, I went into the contact record for the organization, Anderson. I clicked on the relationships tab, and then I see this list. Now, how did he get that? Well, I'll show you what I did. So you've got to go to his particular contact record to assign that. So you go to the contact record for the individual. Okay, for Michael Johnson. And you click on, you, know, you get in there, and then you click on relationships on the tab in his contact record. And then you'll see that he has this employee of relationship with Anderson. So you come over to the right and click on edit. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see this screen. And see what I circled in purple there? Michael Johnson can view and update information. So when I select that box, what I've done is actually given him the permissioned relationship. Now, there's something else I've done, too, and I'm not really getting into it, but that if somebody's um, uh, logging in, uh, like if he has login credentials, then he could make some changes you know, to the Anderson Company contact record. But for today, let's just focus on the idea of the permissioned relationship. Now, the email will also go, though, to any kind of generic email address for the organization itself, like info at Anderson Company or something. It would go there as well. Okay, so it will actually go 
to the general, or whatever email address is in the organization contact record, right? And then it'll also go to, to the person or the employee that has the permissioned relationship. So let's talk a little bit about membership types because this is kind of leading us a bit into, you know, when we're talking about like a small business or a corporate um, uh, membership type. And, you know, this might be when you're getting ready to do a membership renewal campaign, it may be a time when you're thinking a little bit about your membership types. And maybe you're going to want to update or add new ones or make changes. And I don't know, um, you know, how familiar everybody is with the different membership types, like how you configure those. But you can go in and do all sorts of different things. And I've, this slide is a little, or this um, screenshot's a little bit small and a little bit blurry, or is it just me? But you can see that I have all these different membership types. Like I have student, small business, corporate. This is my demo, so I've got everything senior, et cetera. And, um, and what you can do is you can designate, uh, well, of course, you're going to put pricing in there. But you can also do things like put maximum related number of employees. So if you have a corporate level membership, you could say, well, I'm going to allow six employees from that organization to be um, related members. And they kind of, we call it inherit the membership. So the primary member is still that organization. Okay, so, so let's pretend like, um, I have one called CompuMentor, I think is the name of it. And it's, it's one of my corporate members in the demo. And so CompuMentor is the primary member, but then they can have, um, let's see, for corporate, I think I'm allowing five. Like maybe it's six, can't quite tell. But six employees. So, you know, a lot of organizations are going to have a lot more employees that want to benefit. And you kind of, you know, you don't have to cut it off. You could just let as many employees as, as you know, you want. Related members, okay. But they're usually employees of an organization if you're talking about like a corporate. Now, it could also work with households. Think about it, you could have a household member, membership, and then you could have the related members would be people that are members of that household. So there it wouldn't be employees, it would be household member. Auto renew, that's another option. Now if you have a payment processor that supports auto renew, you could you know, have people sign up online and, and it would automatically charge the credit card. One last thing, um, just period type, we talked about that fixed and rolling and you see that I chose rolling on all of those in my demo, but you know, if you had fixed, uh, period types where you started your memberships all at the same date, like January 1st, you know, then it would say fixed there. Let's talk about configuring now our membership page, okay? And actually, I wrote um, Civi member there, but I really should have written Civi um, uh, contribution, shouldn't I? Because you're going to go under, but that's okay. Because it's a little confusing sometimes in the beginning, like where is that membership page stored? It's under contribution. So if you think about it this way, think of that membership dues are money you're bringing in. Any kind of money you bring in is a contribution in Civi. So it'll be with the other contribution pages. So if you have like a donate page or um, whatever, fundraising page, you know, your membership page is also going to be stored under that same manage contribution page section. But it's its own special thing. It's a little different from those other pages, OK? And, um, but if you don't have one configured, you know, obviously, this is the time to do it. Now, uh, you can configure more than one membership page. And the reason you might want to do this, and you don't have to, but a reason you might want to is if you're going to be gathering different types of information. You know, like say you have an individual membership and so that's going to be one kind of you know information you're going to gather about individuals and then you have a corporate level and you're going to get uh, information that you want to gather on the membership page about the industry and maybe the number of employees and I don't know the revenue whatever different kind of custom fields that you would insert in there and so you don't necessarily want to mix those two because if somebody goes to sign up and they're an individual they may not want to see all that other stuff or deal with that other stuff Okay, so that's a reason you might want to have two different membership pages. And um, for an example of that, like some of our, uh, the people we work with, the clients we work with, are chambers of commerce. And they ask a lot of questions of their organizational 
level, you know, of their corporate members. So they, it's practically like a survey. And you go on and, and they, but they gather all that information. It's great because they get that and then that goes into the contact record and is saved there. So, you know, it's a great way to really gather information. When you're doing membership renewal or membership sign up, you know, you can gather a lot of info about your constituents, especially if you force them to fill in the fields because <laughs> they're required. But anyway, so, um, so there, those are, that's the first point there. And then there's a couple of other things you're going to think about when you're setting up this membership page. Deciding if you want to accept payments offline. You know, because you're going to have people that would rather call in and give a credit card over the phone um, because they don't like to put their credit cards into a computer. You know, because we all know how tricky that can be with fraud. And then, uh, or people that just want to send in a check. You know, and so you're going to have those kinds of situations. So you may want to offer that. And, um, and then you want to, this was what I was talking about earlier, update profiles, good opportunity to collect data. So those profiles are just, you know, Virginie did this whole class yesterday on profiles. It was so fun to, that you can use in so many ways, but it's just a collection of fields. Profiles, it could be basic fields like name and address, could be custom fields, things like age, um, or industry type, or food preference, whatever. So, but you can really gather that data at this point, okay? So that might be in the membership page itself, you can insert profiles. There's a whole, you know, area where you do that, and that's where you can decide if you want to gather additional info. And now, one thing is if, um, I, I listed actually the name of two different profiles. That on behalf of an organization, that's a profile that is under the reserved tab. If you go into profiles in CIVI, and it's a profile that is, you know, it's by default standard in CIVI, so everybody's got that one. And what that does is if a person, you know, you always want to have a person coming and signing up, and they're signing up on behalf of an organization, say it's a corporate level membership. So that will give them um, some fields that they fill in about the organization, okay? And that also, that profile, what it does is um, it's like if somebody, and we're not really talking renewal right now, but think about new member. If somebody comes and they're signing up on behalf of an organization, with that profile you're going to create an organization contact record and you're also going to create um, an individual contact record if that's a brand new, you know, um, contact for you, okay? So just kind of be aware of that. Then the supporter profile is under the user defined tab. Like, so if you, I don't know if you have your CRM pulled up, but if you go under profiles, which is administer, customize data and screens, profiles, is your little thread there. And then you can find that supporter profile, okay? Now you can make changes to those, but I recommend it's better to make a copy of the profile, don't you think, Virginie, first? if you want to make a copy of the profile before you make a bunch of changes. Because I've done things before where I've changed profiles. <laughs> and then, you know, because they're used not just in that one. They could be used in different spots. You know, one profile can be used in several different places. It can be used on your membership page. It can be used, you know, on an event page. So be careful, because if you make the changes, then it's going to affect every location where the profile is being used. Okay, so. Here is the membership page. Um, this is the first tab. It's called Title. And I just wanted to point out, see, there's the campaign. Um, you know, it was a drop down, and I chose Membership. So you don't quite see it there, but it says April 21st, and it'll say 2015. So it, it actually inserted that date. I didn't put that into the title. It did that automatically. But that's where you do that. And see right underneath, I don't know if you can read that, it says allow individuals to contribute or sign up for membership on behalf of an organization. So I checked that and then it opened up that box there or it made it appear and then I selected the on behalf of organization profile right there. So that's where that profile is, is um, kind of managed but the other profile I was talking about is managed up there on the top where it says profiles on the tabs. That's where you go to manage the other profiles for the membership page. 
there's a couple different ways that you can have people renew. Okay. The first one is you're just going to you're going to give everybody, you know, um, login credentials your members, and then they can go and log in to your CMS and they can renew. But <laughs> that doesn't always work that great because people forget, they lose them, they just, you know, they forget to use them, they, they do different things and then all of a sudden it's a big disaster. They might create a new membership for themselves, they might go in and put different information, I don't know, you know, it can really, there's a lot of room for error. It can work, and we have a customer that kind of, they do it that way, but another way that I want to talk about is sending an email out where you have a special link in there. And people oftentimes refer to it as the checksum token link, but I like the special link because it includes more than just the checksum token. And I'm going to explain to you on the next slide what this is all about. But you can also offer both met methods. You can say, OK, you can go and log in and renew that way. Or you could just click on this link, and you're going to insert the link in the email, and then they go to that. And let me explain, if we could go to the next slide, what this is about. There's a lot of words on this slide, but I felt like you needed to have this info. So what it is, it's a, it's a link that you're going to insert into the membership um, renewal email, okay? And it's going to take them to the membership page and it's going to autofill all of their info. Because this link uses a couple of different tokens. It uses this contact ID token that identifies the specific contact record because everybody in the CRM has a contact ID, right, if they're a contact. So it's going to identify who that is. And then the checksum token is kind of like a password and it's going to allow them to, con to access their personal information and it's going to fill that personal information in, right, into the... So what happens is you send this out and it's actually only active for seven days, but you can go in and modify that and make it active for longer. Um, they're not really logging into the CRM, but it's kind of like they're accessing, I don't know really all the technical, Virginie could probably tell us more technically what's happening there. But this is an example of the link. Okay, so see, you've got like Civi CRM contribute, transact, and reset equals one. So that's pointing to the membership page. And I'm not a very technical person, but I just. And then you've got, see, the contact, contact ID, that's that token. And then the contact checksum is the other token. Okay, so this is something that is really helpful, and we recommend that people do their renewals that way because it helps um, reduce the room for error, you know, with people creating a new membership or perhaps putting in um, an organization name that is slightly different, and then, you know, yeah. Um, you may be covering this, but um, so what are the cons to doing a check sum? Because I can tell you, like, for us, uh, some of our groups use it, and uh -huh. then Oh, to other people. Yeah, it's going to be the other. It's going to be so. I think you need to be very explicit in your email that you send out and say this is a specific link for your contact record. You know, do not forward this, and just be real explicit about it. And you're going to need to say like this thing's going to expire in seven days, or if you want to make it two weeks let them know. Because you know, if, if your members are anything like how I am, I'm a huge procrastinator and I'll wait till the very last minute. Like, oh, it's the deadline. Oh, I'm going to sign up now. You know, and so, and I'd probably wait till the day after the deadline. Because um, that's me. But, so that's something I would be real explicit and really, you know, and it's funny, maybe say it a couple different times because you know how people are. They gloss through these things. Um, okay, so talking about creating this, the actual a renewal email. And this is, I'm going to talk about two different things. I have a slide here about schedule reminders. So, you know, this is where it's automated. It's going to go out automatically based on different things. And, um, but you could also, say you have um, a fixed membership, you know, where everybody's renewing at the same time and you start your membership renewal campaign 
like in November, you know, or whatever. And you might just want to use civy mail to send out a big mass email and say, hey, you know, we're, renewals are, are going to be um, coming up, you know, and blah, blah, blah. But this schedule reminders is a little bit more designed for, for the rolling membership um, type, you know, or not type, but the rolling membership, um, what's the word I'm looking Model. for? Period? Model. Model. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm tired. It's, it's 3 o'clock. We need our coffee. Okay, so um, you can create several different reminders in the schedule reminders. And you can send out before and after, or you could send out like a month before and a week before. And it's great because um, you're going to create this email in there, and you're going to use you know tokens to personalize it. Like you're going to use the communication tokens, like maybe the the email greeting, or you might say dear and then first name. You know, use that token, and you can put in other tokens related um, to the membership data. So you'll have available to you things about like you know status or membership type, I believe. So, you know, just you look through there and you'll see those. And you can create kind of a lot of different emails and have them stored in there. I mean, if you want to send out an email every week, you can do it. So, and it'll automatically send it out. Okay? And then you can also go in and create customized emails for each membership type. And I think I have, is my next one a slide that kind of shows well, this isn't really great here, but this was, I was just showing you that like we had created one that was one month before the membership end date and one month after the membership end date. But if you go to the next slide, I think that's more of a, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is where you could go in and choose, like say you choose small business and then you create an email that's really customized and the verbiage in there is, is just for your small business members. Or you might have one that goes to the individual members and it's a certain way. So you don't have to have the same email go out to every membership type. So this is where you can do that and then you can choose. Um, so see, you could choose a specific date where every single um, email would go, you know, like see you could put a specific date in that top box when it's like a calendar date. Or you can do more of a relative date, like one month before, and then you've got membership end date, and it's also membership start date is the um, other option, I believe, up there. But then if you continued on, and we can't because my screen stops there, but you'd see where you create your email in it down below in an HTML um, editor, in the visual editor, okay? So, um, Okay, so I, Vishnu, would you mind going back to the text one? Um, like, okay. So here, let me just make sure I made all my points. Um, okay, the last point. By default, schedule reminders will be sent to contacts who have opted out of bulk or email communications. So even if you don't have civ email that you're using, you might have folks that say, I don't, it's kind of rare, but you know, they don't want to be communicated via email. And in the communication preferences in the contact record, you know, for the individual, you can put that, you know, you can get a little stop sign. But regardless of that, even if they say that, for these, they'd still get it unless you exclude them. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Okay. So um, talking about following up then afterwards, you can do a couple of different things. One would be to go in and create smart groups. Um, to kind of track who has renewed and who hasn't renewed. And um, you can do, um, let me look at my notes here, a couple of different things. One thing, now you're going to, when you go in, you know, when you make a, create a smart group and um, you're going to go into uh, contact searches, you're going to use the contact searches. So, you know, you might be using find contacts, but usually we're going into advanced search, okay, because that has everything we need. And um, not always, but I would recommend going into advanced search. And then what you could do is you could search on the activity type. Membership renewal is an activity type. So you go into advanced search and you click on activities, the bar that has activities, open that up, and then you can find your membership renewal. So if somebody's renewed, it's gonna be recorded as an activity type. And then you can search and see, well, who did renew? 
So that's one kind of search you can, you, you need to do that, and then you can create a smart group from there. Or, you know, if you're looking and you click on the membership section of advanced search, you could search on um, the grace and expired status to see who didn't renew yet. You know, so there's just different ways you play with it a little bit, and then you can create these smart groups. There's also, I wanted to tell you about, I don't know if you know about those custom searches. They're at the very bottom of the search um, navigation um, menu. It's called custom searches. And there's one in there called include, exclude. Do you know about that one? It's really a great one. A lot of people use it in, with groups. So like you include one group and exclude, and, you know, and there's all these combinations. And it, it really meets the needs for a lot of people when they're trying to find stuff. So then you're probably going to have to do, you know, either another email communication or a follow-up with phone call. You could also send thank you notes to the folks that did renew. And um, uh, who was talking? It was uh, Stormy yesterday. I think she was saying that it's good to follow up with people 24 hours, you know, after. Um, so, you know, you could automate some things maybe. I don't know. But it might not be possible. But, you know, so... Monitoring now, you could also go in and monitor um, a bit more with the reports. And um, you could go into under report, create report templates, and go under the membership section. And you know, there's those four different reports in there for membership and the lapsed member report. You could use that one, open that one up. And, um, and then you can monitor. And you can filter in that report on a campaign. So um, you could filter on your membership renewal campaign if you wanted to. And then you could also use, I was just thinking about this earlier, and I just quickly added this into the slide, but you could go and do an activity report to track completed membership renewals. But you know, you get that same information when you're doing the search, but the report is more lasting in that you, know, you can kind of create the report and then have it. Um, available to you or email it or if you have board members that want to see progress and so you email it or export it or whatever. And then you can add those reports to your home dashboard. And does everybody pretty familiar with that? You, there's a little box you check off and it says um, make a report available. They call it a dashlet. It's at the very bottom of create reports. Then when you go to your home dashboard or anybody from your um, organization, they'll have that report available, and they can drag it down to view it. Like you, It's up there in the available reports. So you won't see it on your dashboard unless you drag it into those two views. So this is just an example of when you're setting up um, the lapsed membership report. You know, you've got your criteria. You really don't even need to fill out that much. The member name and the membership lapse date and membership type and current status, those are all by default going to show up in that report. See, they have that little X. I don't know if you can see that. But then I filtered on the campaign. OK, so that was just kind of in the setup. OK, so last slide, my name. <laughs> so if you guys need any more info, um, I'm Susan Engeman. You can email me. Um, check out the training. That's our uh, Desk uh, website, and then training. And that's the training schedule if you're interested in any classes. Thanks, guys.